On average, eight annual tsunamis occur in the Pacific Ocean, where only one occurs every three years in the Indian Ocean. The Global Tsunami Database Project recorded some 2,250 historic tsunami events since the year 1628, where 1,206 of these occurred in the Pacific Ocean, 263 in the Atlantic Ocean, 125 in the Indian Ocean, and 545 occurred in the Mediterranean region. This powerful yet destructive force of nature is often incorrectly referred to as a tidal wave and is properly called seismic sea waves or tsunamis. Tsunamis are commonly formed during the currents of offshore earthquakes where subduction takes place. Tsunami-producing earthquakes most commonly form along thrust faults causing water above it to be uplifted at subduction zones. The scale of a tsunami is determined by the displacement orientation, where vertical displacements occur at slower rates, causing bigger tsunamis. In addition to thrust faulting, shallow dipping faults create a number of tsunamis, where large areas undergo minor upliftment, displacing water. In the case of seismic ruptures, the tsunami generated poses a much greater hazard than those generated by landslides. Landslides big enough to produce hazardous tsunamis are often generated along convergent tectonic boundaries, where unconsolidated material flows into deep sea trenches. Tsunamis caused by volcanic eruptions form due to pyroclastic material and lahars entering a water body at high speeds. The formation can also be ascribed to subsidence of volcanic edifices and lateral explosions. Tsunami waves are unmistakably different from normal sea waves. Capable of moving at speeds of up to 800 km per hour, tsunami waves generate water dunes of more than 20 meters in height as they extend into shallow waters. Tsunamis are generally only 0.3 to 0.6 meters high as they move across the ocean basin. The mechanism controlling tsunami movement speeds is the depth of the sea. Once shallow waters are encountered, the wave speed drastically reduces, effectively causing the water to pile up, causing the wave amplitude to increase. The tempo at which the water rises depends significantly on the topography of the ocean floor near the coastal region, where steeper topography will cause a more rapid water rise. From the conception of a tsunami to the later destruction, four phases can be distinguished. The first phase is the initiation or conception phase. During the initiation stage, water gets displaced, resulting in a horizontal propagating wave to form. Phase 2 is known as the split, where the tsunami formed in phase 1 gets split up into various waves. Waves propagated towards the nearest coastal region are called local waves, and those heading for the deep ocean are called distant waves. Once a local tsunami moves over the continental shelf, which consists of much shallower waters, the amplitude of the wave increases causing shorter wavelengths. This phase is known as the amplification phase. The fourth and final phase of a tsunami is known as the run-up. Here, tsunamis move from the continental shelf towards the shoreline. Tsunamis do not curl and break like normal waves. Rather, they act like a strong tide coming in rapidly. As a tsunami is about to strike a shoreline, the sea withdraws a huge area, even to where it cannot be seen any longer. Then disaster strikes shortly after. Because tsunamis are mostly caused by major seismic activity and volcanoes in some instances, predictability is made relatively easy. Long-term prediction of tsunamis aim to determine geographical locations where tsunamis are likely to form as well as the magnitude of the tsunami near the origin. Therefore, modelers approximate the amplitude of a tsunami across the ocean basin. 
Even though there are still very little that can be done to oncoming tsunamis, monitoring them can give inhabitants the chance to evacuate an area. Among many, the International Tsunami Warning System consists of various interconnected monitoring stations studying significant earthquakes on the ocean floor big enough to generate tsunamis.